find the volume of the solid region D and R3 bounded by the paraboloids y is equal to x squared plus z squared and y is equal to 16 minus 3x squared minus z squared. So the first thing that we want to do here is sketch this solid region. So we're sketching D, our region of integration in R3. Now let's think about the bounds that are given. We have two paraboloids here. We have y is defined as x squared plus z squared. And then we have y is equal to 16 minus 3x squared minus z squared. So even though these two surfaces are defined as y in terms of x and z, we'll treat them the same way as if it was z in terms of x and y. So looking at our first paraboloid here, we notice that the coefficients on both x and z are positive. So this, this means that each trace is going to have a concave up parabola. Looking at our second paraboloid here, we see that the coefficients on x and z here are negative, meaning those paraboloids or the traces defined by these parabolas are concave down. We also want to make note that this is shifted 16 units up on the y-axis. So going ahead and sketching ourselves a graph. Here is z and our x-axis and our y. Actually, let's extend that out. There's our y-axis. Now we know our first paraboloid here starts at the origin. We'll say that this is our, our first paraboloid. And then our second paraboloid, again, I'm drawing these in two dimensions to get us started, and then we'll indicate the three dimensions. We'll say there's where y is 16, and these paraboloids are concave down. So this is our solid region here. is what we will be integrating over. Here is D. So using our sketch, we're actually able to go ahead and define our Y bounds. We can say that therefore, we can see from our graph here that the lower bound is the paraboloid Y is equal to X squared plus Z squared. And our upper bounding paraboloid is Y is equal to 16 minus 3X squared minus z squared. So therefore y is greater than or equal to x squared plus z squared and less than or equal to 16 minus 3x squared minus z squared. So now that we have the bounds for y, we're ready to think about this solid's projection into the two dimensions. So we are considering the solid's projection into two dimensions, and here it's being projected into the xz plane. And from looking at our graph here, you can see this would this is going to be the region that will cast the shadow into the xz plane. So we can see the general shape of this, but we want to make sure to find it by equating our surfaces. So since the projection is in the xz plane, we know y is 0, allowing us to equate our surfaces. We have x squared plus z squared is equal to 16 minus 3x squared minus z squared, and we'll simplify here. So bringing all of our variables to one side, I have 4x squared plus 2z squared is equal to 16. And then last but not least, we can divide both sides here by 2, which leaves us with 2x squared plus z squared is equal to 8. And so this is an ellipse centered at the origin. And let's be mindful here that accuracy counts. It helps us with our bounds. So if we think in terms of the intercepts of this ellipse, our x-intercept would be 2x squared is equal to 8. 
So we have x squared is 4, showing us that we'll have x intercepts here at plus or minus 2. And then we want to do the same thing for our z intercepts. So letting x be 0, I have z squared is equal to 8. So z, taking the square root of both sides, we have z is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8, which simplifies to plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. And we're ready to go ahead here and sketch our two-dimensional projection. So here is my z-axis and the x-axis, and we know we have an ellipse. So here is our two-dimensional region R. We have positive square root of 8, or 2 square root 2, and 2 and negative 2 on the x-axis. All right, so here is our projection R. So we want to use this region to determine the bounds on x and z. So you can either use a horizontal line or a vertical line here to define the bounds. So I'll say for some arbitrary x, you can see if we were to draw a faux cross section here, just a vertical line, you can see that this region above the x-axis is the top curve, and this region below the x-axis will be our bottom curve. So this would be some function z in terms of x, and the same thing for the top curve. We'll say that's g of x. All right, so to find those bounds on z, all that we need to do is solve the ellipse for z. So we are finding the z bounds. So I think our ellipse that we found was 2x squared plus z squared is equal to 8. And solving for z here, we have z squared is equal to 8 minus 2x squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we see z is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8 minus 2x squared. So we can say that therefore z is going to be greater than or equal to minus the square root of 8 minus 2x squared. This is the portion of the ellipse below the x-axis. And then z is going to be less than or equal to positive square root of 8 minus 2x squared, the region of the, uh, the ellipse above the x-axis. And then for the x-bounds, we'll just use those constants, those x-intercepts. And we know that x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2, less than or equal to positive 2. Then we're ready to go. So let's set up this volume integral. So we know that the volume of that solid region D here is being defined as a triple integral over D. Our integrand is 1 dV. So here we have our outer bounds are x, so the integral from negative 2 to 2. Our middle bounds are z from minus the square root of 8 minus 2x squared to positive the square root of 8 minus 2x squared. And then our inner integral here is with respect to y. So our lower bound was x squared plus z squared, and our upper bound was 16 minus 3x squared minus z squared. And the order of integration is dy, dz, dx.